Welcome to Envisioning Success, the weekly podcast that's your prescription for business clarity. In today's episode, we unravel the art of speaking the language of your avatar with Laura Benedetto and Julia Becker-Collins. Learn the power of crafting messages that address the needs and desires of your avatar. Tune in as we explore the value of plain, relatable language, avoiding jargon for more engaging communication. Transform your business language and connect deeply with your audience. Hey everybody, my name is Laura Di Benedetto, and you are listening to Envisioning Success. I'm your host, Laura Di Benedetto, joined by my co-host Julia Becker Collins. Hey everybody, we're happy that you're here. So on today's episode of Coffee Talk, we're going to be discussing speaking your avatar's language. I'll give you a topic. There it is, and you don't have to talk amongst yourselves. Separately, Rhode Island is indeed neither a road nor an island, so there's that. Um, randomly. I put together proposals and today I was working on one where I really needed the client to talk amongst themselves. You bet your biscuits I put in a Linda Richmond meme because of course I did. It's a solid reference. I'm here for that. Well, I also know the avatar and the avatar is right about my age and we have the same dumb humor. So, (laughs) right. Well, if you listened to the last four episodes, you know, we were talking about avatars and now we're talking about what we say to the avatar. It's great to know who people are. Mm -hmm. You want to talk, don't you? Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be diving into making it easy and fun to understand why speaking their language can transform your business. Love to hear it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with um, messaging and why it's so much more than the obvious, hey, can you buy my stuff? Right? Yes. Isn't that what everybody's trying to say? It's like, how many different ways can I say, buy my stuff? Right. Right? Yeah. This isn't that. It's actually about understanding their pain. And, oh, here comes another one of my famous $50 words using psychographics. So we're back to the $5 to $50 word range. Excellent. It wouldn't be one of our shows without that. (laughs) How do you want to dive into that topic, Julia? Um, well, I'm happy to tell some stories. I uh, just closed a big deal, you know, not to pat myself too hard on the back there, but uh, a sprain. Uh, you know, I got T-Rex arms, so I don't really have to worry about being able to get there. Uh, but uh, I think that that client's a really great example, uh, the conversations I had with them about um, how messaging is so much more than, like you said, buy from us and also you know, why speaking the avatar's language is so important. So I'm happy to kind of dive in there. Yeah, do it. So um, obviously we're going to be moving and shaking and making all kinds of great stuff happen. But talk to me about how you're planning to understand who their avatar is and then specifically how we need to speak to them to cap, uh, not capture, but to tap into those pain points that would make someone be like, Hey, you know what? I need to give you my money. Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, you know, part of the sales process for me is having long conversations with the business owner or president or whoever's, you know, head honcho in charge. Um, about who they currently sell to. Are they B2B? Are they B2C? Are they D2C? You know, what's happening there? Um, What type of person currently buys the product or service that they're selling? How they hear about them? Why people stay on as a long-term client? Why they choose to leave? Really diving into the psychology of it um, Mm -hmm. and figuring out, okay, well, what does that person look like? You know, air quotes around look. What, you know, where are they geographically? How old are they? How much money do they make? Do they have to own their home? In this instance, um, it's a company that works with homeowners and uh, rental apartments and uh, large businesses. So there is a B2B side and a B2C side, but they don't work with people that rent. They're not working with people that are looking to buy. It's established homeowners in a certain specific geographic area. They're trying to, um, move into a new geographic area. They know what that geographic area is. The type of person they're selling to is very similar in the new area as opposed to where they currently service. So they're able to kind of copy and paste a little bit. Um, 
but it's really helpful to hear from them about, okay, well, why do people choose to stay? Why do people choose to leave? Like, what's their number one complaint? Who's the greatest kind of client for you? Is it somebody who just lets you do your job? Or do you want that kind of feedback, et cetera, et cetera? So it's really having long conversations and trying to pull apart who they're selling to and who they'd like to sell to, especially in this new territory. Mm. Yeah, that's important. I think, you know, the, the more that you're going to be diving into the work with this client, just like you do with everybody else, it's obviously understanding the avatar intimately and, you know, who they are, but really specifically, like why they're buying um, and what problem you're solving. And that's the whole question of pain. And I think about that when, um, you know, I'm thinking about the sales process because, you know, we serve a lot of professional service companies, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, well, with services, there's often a sales process versus, versus like go to the website and just buy the merch or whatever. There's a conversation, sometimes meetings, depending on the dollars involved. Um, but, you know, the the pain points, that's, that's I think, going to be the, the exciting part of this is really understanding the avatar, who they are, um, obviously from, you know, psychographics perspective. Um, I do love that word. I feel so smart. When it's a I great word. It. Mm -hmm. I feel like Homer Simpson, SMRT. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing about uh, understanding someone's pain is it really acquaints you with the real core, to, core motivation behind making a purchase. You know, people rarely pursue pleasure when they're um, looking to spend money. And a lot of people challenge me on this until I start whipping out examples. Um, but a great example of um, the type of pain, I mean, you could be buying a Rolex and you think that it's a pleasure purchase. No, you're probably feeling insecure about something and you want to keep up with the Joneses. That's a pain point. Um, you know, purchasing a service that alleviates a headache from you because it's making you stressed and causing you to fight with your business partners okay, that's a pain point. Like it's very, very important to understand the pain because that's where you, uh, you have to speak to. And the messages are again, more than just, Hey, buy my stuff. It's, Hey, uh, we can solve this. Right. Right. And I think that's an important point, especially when you're selling a service versus a product. Um, you know, when you're selling a product, you can work on impulse purchases, you can work on social media, you can have people just buy the hard thing that they can hold in their hand and ship it off to them. Whereas selling a service, you need to have somebody understand what the benefit is, right? Instead of, um, you know, trying to sell them on the softness of the sweater, you're trying to sell them on, like you said, what does this solve for the person? Mm -hmm. um, and that is much more ethereal, $5 word. Ooh, and like it. it's a good one, right? You take payments. Um, you can send it to me by Venmo on that. The quarter is in the mail. There we go. Um, but it's also trying to see how, you know, why they should choose you over somebody else and why they should even right. invest in that service to begin with. Um, you know, we are a marketing agency and oftentimes people don't know how to buy from us, don't know what to ask, don't know what they should be doing, don't understand what even right. is considered marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So part of the sales process is educating somebody. And that happens a lot when you're selling a service. Yeah. Well, people, I mean, largely people do not know how to buy from us, which is our problem to solve. But understanding like when we're trying to sell our services and grow our client roster we need to understand why people call us they don't call us because they're looking for marketing nobody lays awake at night going you know i really could use a better hashtag strategy I said nobody ever <laughs> right like that doesn't happen they see the problem and the problem is shoot there was a massive demand for my services during covid but now that people are not home as much the demand has gone away and other companies grew during this period. My company grew during this period. And now I'm in a red ocean with like tons of companies competing for the same dollars and there's less of them to compete for. Um, we're in trouble. Yup. That's a problem. And, and part of our job as marketers 
marketing ourselves is to send the message. We understand the situation that you're in. Here's some, you know, here's some opportunities for you to fix that. Because at the end of the day, a lot of times the product or service that you have is not what people are buying. They're buying a solution to a problem that perhaps your product or service addresses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, oftentimes when I speak to new clients, prospective clients, et cetera, one of the things I say about the work that we do is, you know, we take the headache away from you. We take this all off your plate and you're, you know, basically buying an entire marketing department. And so when I have conversations with them about what they do, like you said, we primarily work with professional services. It's what are they solving for somebody? So are you right. solving the headache of choosing insurance? Are you solving the headache of estate planning? Are you solving um, the issues around how to recycle air conditioners and other hazardous waste, et cetera, et right. cetera, which you know, if you come down to my basement in my house, hello, I live in New England. I have all kinds of things I'd love to recycle. So sometimes it's that you're solving something you don't realize, somebody doesn't realize they need solved until it's kind of put in their face. And I can be like, oh, that's right. I have an air conditioner to recycle. I have some paint down there, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's more, you know, upfront for somebody. They're renovating a house. They are, um, they inherited a house and they need to get rid of everything in the basement, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think you just, you brought something up and made it like really clear to me um, that really we need to call out. People know the problem. They have no idea how to solve it. Like, I don't know how to get rid of paint correctly. Right. I mean, other than just chuck it in the bin, what am I supposed to do with it? I don't know. That's a problem. I don't know. So I would just sit there and look at it, which pisses me off, you know, or like, how do I do an estate plan? I don't know. How do I make it durable? So it stands up to the law. I don't know. How do I do accounting? Everybody knows. I don't know. <laughs> Me and QuickBooks, man, we're not friends. Like, I don't know how to do certain things. And a lot of times, especially in the service businesses, the problem you're solving is someone needs a solution, a thing, whatever. I, I need that. I don't know how to get that. So right. your messages need to be, hey, I'm going to help you get that. I understand that. That is right. fixable. Right. It's okay. Right. Take a breath. <laughs> right. To speak to your point earlier about, you know, don't say buy the thing. You should more be saying, you know, here's what we solve for you. Here's how we help you. People want help. Like in general, people want to be helped and people want to help. So not only is that a great way of getting buy-in from staff, on whatever project you're working on, it's also a great way to speak to that avatar about let's help you do A, B, and C. So like another example could be landscaping, especially if you landscape for huge properties or very large houses or just do snow cleanup. Yeah. Um, I would love to not shovel my snow anymore. Again, I live in New England. It's kind of a yearly hassle. So I solved you... that by moving to Florida. Yeah, I know. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I say this and it's 30 degrees this morning. Um, bad. It's very bad. Um, so not only could somebody help me as a you know, homeowner with dealing with all the snow, but they could also then come in and be like, we can do your leaf removal. That'd be great. I'd love my time back. Because it's not that I'm physically unable to do the leaf removal. I just don't want to do the leaf removal. I'd well, love to value your time. And the idea of losing it is a problem for you. So exactly. that's the problem that would need solving. So one thing I really want to talk about here is um, why speaking the avatar's language and speaking to the problem that they're facing um, can feel natural and rewarding and, and wait for it. It can actually be fun. What? Yeah. So I have thoughts on this. Do you have any? Uh, I mean, you know me. I always have thoughts. <laughs> Lay on me, sister. Um, well, I think people overthink their marketing oftentimes, uh, as people overthink many things. Um, if you can put yourself in the mindset of, you know, speaking to the correct person, speaking to that avatar, it becomes easier, which is definitely more fun. It doesn't feel as stressful. Um, and also, you can see a return on that work, which 
if you're anything like me and Laura, you like to see the return on the work. You like to see people responding to you. You like to see people excited about what you're saying. Um, that's great. And to then understand like, hey, I'm speaking the avatar's language. Um, this is working. This is um, doing the right thing. You feel like you get momentum and momentum is something that is very valuable. Oh, it's super validating too. Cause like sometimes, you know, I mean, i like for my other company, um, I absolutely love going into trust pilot and responding to the reviews. And it really is deeply validating that we're doing the right stuff. And, you know, a lot of the messaging is in my replies. So someone will say, Hey, we really appreciate that we got treated really well and blah, blah, blah. Well, I reinforce a lot of our company messaging in there, which is one of the messages is you matter, you're important, you know? So I will often say things to remind people, Hey, you're a VIP people, the VIP for life. Thank you for, you know, being an early adopter. We appreciate you, you know, and expressing loads and loads of gratitude because gratitude is one of the major things that our avatar really likes. I mean, pro tip, everybody does. So, um, you know, it's your message is actually, it's not just what you put in your ad copy. It's the way you respond to comments and social media, the way you respond to reviews, the way you reply to emails, like your messaging does need to be consistent. Um, and actually down to earth, which is my next point that I wanted to talk about. Like, um, I, I, I hate, hate jargon. So many people hate it. Like, listen, I have fun with my $50 words. I don't hit these with, you know, hit these over the head, on, you know, with my clients. Like, yeah, so anyway, we're, today we're going to be talking about your psychographics and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we're talking about it in the podcast because this is an educational podcast and it's appropriate for here. Um, but I don't bring this crap up in normal everyday conversation. Hi, Julia. Right. How are you today? Check in on the demographics. Hey, you know, leaning yeah. on the water cooler. Like, no. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, this is very similar to a conversation I just had with this client that, you know, what you, who is internal to the company, thinks is important is not necessarily what's important to the person that you're uh, selling to and what they are valuing and how you're helping them. So you need to kind of take a step back to understand that differentiation. But mm -hmm. then if you're using jargon that the avatar doesn't understand, you're going to distance them rather than pull them in. You People don't want to be made to feel stupid if they don't understand the words that you're they using. Don't. They're just going to walk away. Well, and honestly, I think a lot of marketers tend to do this. Um, people, for some reason, this is one of my main pet peeves, probably because I'm over 40. I deeply hate when people like abbreviate and do shorthand. They'll be like, yeah, what's the CPM? Shut the hell up. I don't want to have to think. Just use English. Like yeah. that's jargon when you're like abbreviating things. I'm left with w WTF. Like, right. Don't do that. Nobody wants jargons. We don't want um, abbreviations that are unnecessary. Like, you know, how many abbreviations are there just within like the Google AdWords panel? I mean, there's right. just way too many and it, it can be overwhelming. You're right. That's such a good point. People don't want to be made to feel stupid. So <laughs> if you're going to speak your avatar's language, everybody's avatar wants to be loved. Everybody's <laughs> avatar wants to be appreciated. Everybody's avatar wants to know that Oh, somebody else is going to solve this for me. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a product, you know, uh, and sometimes it's products that you wouldn't expect. Could be clothing, could be luxury stuff. There are problems to be solved. Um, you know, and, and when you're speaking honestly, plainly, simply, and affectionately to whomever you're selling, but you're just on target with your messaging. See what I did there. Um, uh, right. When you do that, you make your avatar lean in because you are pulling them closer. You are making them feel safe. You're making them feel smart. You're making them feel appreciated and loved and most importantly, respected. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One of the things I do when I do public speaking, if I'm going to use fancy marketing terms like ideal client profile or avatar or you know, KPI or whatever, um, I always pause and say, you know, I don't want to assume that anybody knows anything. 
Um, so why don't I explain what that means for a second? Um, and that's always a suggestion I make to people when they're going to do public speaking. Yes, you want to use the correct terms. Yes, you should come off as smart, but you should never assume that people know things and people like to learn new things. So if you need to use fancy language when you're speaking, you should also be explaining it. Amen to that. Cool. Well, let's talk about uh, what we're going to be discussing in the next episode. So the next um, episode is going to be about crafting these messages that really help you to connect. Um, you know, we're doing a monthly theme again. The monthly theme is all about um, profitable communication and how to tailor your messages to your avatar. Um, please do me a favor. Please like this. Please subscribe. <laughs> Please share it. Do all the things. Smash all the buttons like Thor with his hammer. Just smash them. That really helps us to bring more uh, great content to you for free. Um, aside from that, we really appreciate you being here. This show is sponsored by Vision Advertising. We are celebrating our 25th anniversary next year. Really big deal. We're going to be rebranding to just Vision minus the advertising because we do so much more than that. We're going to be talking about that in future episodes when we get to the whole branding conundrum. Um, but yeah, super stoked to have you here. Thanks, Julia, for being uh, the co-hostess with the mostess and over and out. I'm Laura DiBenedetto. This is Julia Becker-Collins and have a beautiful day and we'll see you in the next episode. 